my, my intention really is, um, I, I think there's no shortage of people who will come along and, and talk about the changes that are happening in the world. My point that I'm going to go through this morning is that a whole heap of changes have happened and that you've missed them. And these changes have happened principally because they happen so gradually and so incrementally that we don't notice what's happened from day to day. I thought a good way to start would be to, uh, to, to a bit like when you resume watching your favourite box set, to do a catch-up of the, the state of the world right now. I thought I'd, I'd do briefly a, a catch-up of the world uh, as we see it in, the, in five tweets. So I'm going to give you a five tweets from recent history. The first one's uh, interesting. After yesterday, you saw the, the Google DeepMind exper uh, experiment, Beat, which was built in London, of course, uh, beat the, the World Go champion. Uh, I thought this was interesting about the state of uh, artificial intelligence. <laughs> could, could have done with a better sound there. Um, the, the next one here, if, if the FBI want to get into an iPhone without user's permission, they should ask someone who's done it before like you too. <laughs> I liked this one. When you take a great Instagram pic, but remember you ban the internet in your country. <laughs> Two more. Uh, this, is, uh, this, was, this got almost 50,000 retweets last week. <laughs> Needless to say, I don't think it's good news. And uh, following, I think they were calling it Super Tuesday 2 yesterday, a state on the US election, 2016, Trump won't win. 2017, <laughs> President Trump can't do that, can he? 2018, you're watching the Hunger Games tonight. I hope my district wins. So I think we're caught up to where we need to be. Uh, in fact, Twitter's 10 years old next week, and we've, uh, as Herb mentioned, we've sort of been through a, a really long journey to, 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 to reach that stage. Twitter started off as a way to SMS uh, a group of friends, so it's definitely evolved, and, and we've changed over the course of that. But what I'm going to give you a perspective on now is about four or five changes that, firstly, that we think about as a business, and secondly, four or five changes that are having a big impact on the way that we're using the devices in our pockets. So an obvious one for you to start off, the proliferation of, of cameras has, uh, that's happened over the, the last 10 years. And so this is camera production over the last 10 years, and it gives you a, a scale here. So cameras in 20... 2005, there were about 80,000 cameras produced every year. Obviously, now as cameras have gone on to, to mobile phones, these massive change. But the point specifically there is that not the vast number of cameras that have grown. I think uh, we've heard that the last couple of years, half of all the photographs taken have been taken in the preceding year. We're seeing this sort of exponential growth. But also the, the fact that the cameras changed from a horizontal device. The principally, cameras were uh, the, for the creation of sort of landscape imagery to a vertical device, and that's had a big impact. Another illustration of that is the, the work that Mary Meeker did. So Mary Meeker is the, the analyst who looks at various internet trends every year. She, she tends to publish in about May now every year. And she looked specifically at something that was happening with regards to the shift from screens being horizontal. And obviously, screens are horizontal because we have two eyes. So our, our, our sphere of vision horizontally is, is far broader than it is vertically. But if you, if you look at her most recent trend, in fact, if you take the TV out, so TV's the bottom bar here, and TV's pretty consistent watching the big screen in our lounge has been pretty consistent over the last few years. But you can see that there's been a really strong evolution over the last three or four years to the, the strong growth of vertical screens and, and the way that we're consuming that. And that's really relevant for content creators because we're actually still not seeing content creators start navigating and, and start adapting to the fact that, that content is be, being consumed vertically as much as horizontally. So, in fact, we're, we're starting to, to notice that consumers are ahead of us, that the navigation from horizontal world to vertical world hasn't necessarily been caught up by uh, the, the people who are actually trying to put content on our screens. Another one, just the, the vast growth of video. So, uh, video, in, in fact, is expected to grow by 13 times by, from, from its 2015 level to, the, to 2019, 
But in fact, just looking specifically at Twitter and, and devices consumed on our on mobile phones, we've seen a 220 times increase. So not percent, but times increase in the last 12 months. So that was from December 2014 to December 2015. A massive explosion. And, and clearly that enormously impacts the, the way that we're consuming the devices in our hands and the, the, uh, the, the way that content creators, if they're going to try and put good content in front of people, they need to think about that. Really, this is an illustration of the, the, the contrast between exponential growth and, and linear growth. Ray Kurzweil, who's another uh, person who works for Google now, talks a lot about this. And he says that basically our brains, when we look at growth of 220%, we can't interpret what that means if we extrapolate that. And he talks about the, the impact of linear growth versus, uh, versus exponential growth. That if we took 30 footsteps in a linear fashion, so if, if each footstep was, was a metre, um, then by the end of 30 footsteps would have taken, uh, would have walked 30 metres. Actually, if, you, if those footsteps grew exponentially, so it was one metre, then two metres, then four metres, then eight metres, we find it very hard to interpret growth like that because our brains are telling us it'll be something like 30 metres. And in fact, 30 footsteps uh, with exponential growth grows around the world about 13 times. So we, we find it very hard to understand the, the extrapolation of those consequences. Here's another example. So I'll talk about Kanye West. And here's an interesting phenomenon. When Kanye came over for the Brit Awards last year, something that I, I suspect if you, I asked everyone in the room to anticipate what happened uh, when he went into Nando's, then, then you, you'd probably take a guess. So what happened here? This is Kanye West in, in uh, Nando's. He walked into Nando's in a self-deprecating way. He, he demanded people to take their motherfucking selfies right now, uh, their photographs right now, and he stood on the counter. And what happened was everyone turned their back on him. And, and that's not out of some sort of uh, throwing shade on him, but more the fact that what's happened in the last three or four years since the advent of self-facing cameras is everyone wanted to be in the photo with Kanye West. So we're seeing a, a change there. Another change that's happened because of digital technology, again, that isn't well observed, the, the massive proliferation of, of digital creators. And before I go into how they're changing the world around us. It's just worth calling out the massive impact of these people. I read something recently from the music industry that was suggesting that, in fact, in the same way that we used to deliberately estrange ourselves from our parents by the music choices that we have, increasingly digital creators are the way to do that because your parent won't know who PewDiePie or Smoosh are. They won't, won't understand those people. In fact, when Variety magazine, the, the leading celebrity magazine, the, the entertainment industry magazine in the US, looked at this, it, it asked... 13 to 18 year olds who their biggest uh, most popular stars were and seven of the top 10 were YouTubers. To put that into context all of the top five were YouTubers and the biggest celebrity that probably would be recognised out of this room was Katy Perry at six, Jennifer Lawrence was at eight. So, so big global stars were being displaced by YouTubers. But what actually is happening as a result of it is that because the content they're creating is effectively first person talking to camera, it's having a fascinating impact on the way that language is evolving. There was this article last year from The Atlantic, uh, which is a, a sort of must-follow American publication. And Atlantic wrote an article about uh, the linguistics of YouTube voice. I'll just give you an illustration of what they mean. So they say that effectively to try and make first person uh, camera talking interesting, the YouTubers are trying to sort of evolve the language so you tend to get very bouncy language. Here's an example. This is Tyler Oakley. Well, hello everyone! My name is Tyler Oakley and if there is one language that I am most fluent in, it would have to be emoji. Very dramatic and in fact what then happens is that the YouTubers uh, concatenate loads of short clips to try and keep that, that vocal pitch and speed. Imagine your friend is building a house and they ask you to help, but you've never built a house before. So it would probably be a good idea for you to put on some productive gear and listen to the person in charge, otherwise someone's going to get seriously hurt. Look, I'm helping! Other thing that's happening is that um, because it, just someone talking in itself is, is uh, sort of quite exhausting to watch, they're trying to 
uh, extend and add syllables to words. So here's one example. This physician Martin Heidegger trapping himself. He takes the word trapping and turns it into wrapping. Physician Martin Heidegger trapping himself. And uh, just to illustrate that this phenomenon is a global thing, he's a German... Hallo, Kelly, a.k.a. Mrs. Vlog hier. Und ich dachte mir, ich bin heute mal wieder ganz kreativ und klaue einfach nochmal eine Idee von Shane Dawson. Shane Dawson hat aber auch die besten Videoideen, okay? So, like, big, big changes in the way that content creators need to adapt their messages. And I think sort of bringing all of these things together. So the shift to vertical, the proliferation of video, uh, the, the fact that mobile's becoming a default platform, and the, the arrival of new voices. I thought I'd talk really briefly about how a business like Twitter tries to adapt to those changes. So uh, how do we think, and what do we think are the, the relevant things? I think the one thing that we're increasingly aware of is as we're seeing more video, live, uh, live video and live content seems to be becoming in increasingly important. So I'm going to give you a sense of that. We've really tried to think about how can we bring more people. So Herb mentioned, uh, as, as we're thinking of the, the commentary and the, the evolution of Twitter, how can we help that? So firstly, we, we now allow people to access people logged in and logged out. And so that means that if you arrive at Twitter via a Google search, you can see tweets and and effectively, <coughs> you can come along and, and see Twitter content with, in, in the way, same way that maybe you'd consume YouTube content, an ability to come and see it without having logged in. Another one is that we've added syndication, so the ability to, for people to distribute tweets in their apps and, and add tweets to the content that they're sharing. In total, that means that Twitter's audience has gone from about 320 million uh, uses a month to about 820 million. So uh, a big increase because we're allowing more people to consume content without being logged in. Uh, what we've tried to do as well is, is add a massive amount of innovation to, to what we're launching. So not only have we uh, provided the, the core Twitter features, but we've added products like Periscope, we've added uh, Vine, and we, we've increased far more. I'll show you a couple of the examples here. So we've brought video to standard tweets. This is Periscope in the middle here. So again, back to one of those major trends. One of the things that we were asked when we launched Periscope is why is it vertical? And it's principally because that's the default setting on, on people's mobile phones. We have latterly added uh, horizontal support, but it, it's mainly on vertical. And Vine six second videos have, have really generated a whole legion of new stars. To think about how we're integrating those things, what we've tried to do now is, is allow people to watch live streams within tweets, trying to separate those two things. Also, in the, the last month, we, we added the ability to stream from other cameras onto Periscope. So this is a GoPro integration. Just allows you to use a really high definition camera and, and uh, embed that within a tweet. And we, we've added, uh, we've, we've tried to bring more fun. So anyone who uses Twitter hopefully will have seen the integration of GIFs in the last month. The, it, it's strange that probably 10 years ago when uh, Herb started his business, we were talking probably about the, the, the disappearance of GIFs and they've become such an important part of how we use the web again uh, that effectively it's become a, a, a great way to, to bring more self-expression. So we've, we've added that and the, there you go. And the final one I'll show you is what Periscope actually looks like within tweets. So this is an example here. You can see that the live counters there. You can see that something's streaming. When you click on that, it takes you to the stream. And then if you, if you go into it, you can actually comment in the Periscope app. So I'm going to just show you then, so all of those things brought together, how are other people responding to this? And so adding the, the final element there of live, the, 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 the way that I'm going to show that we responded to this is uh, we were really infatuated with a business that we saw called Niche. And Niche is effectively a business that recognises that that exponential pace of growth that is happening to everything around us wasn't necessarily being responded to by the, all of the, the people responsible for creating content. So Niche is a business that effectively takes some of the digital creators who've, who've developed tens of millions of followers and turns them into the, the ammunition for advertisers and for brands to communicate. 
So let me give you an illustration. This is a piece of work that was created by uh, some of the creators who work for Niche. So Niche has 27,000 individual creators who are connected and effectively it's an ad agency solution that's, that's a software platform. But here's the ad that they finally created for HP for TV. Oh, oh, oh. actually started from a series of Viners who had created six second ads for HP and they, these performed so strongly that HP actually decided let's take that content and put it into our TV ads. So let me show you how the evolution that HP commissioned via Niche to commission these ads. Dude. And the reason why I think this is such a fascinating disruption to what we're seeing is that largely the, the cycle of creativity that's happening is putting people who are creating vines and uh, they're, they're putting vine content in front of audiences every day. They need to respond on, a, on an instant basis to what's happening. And it's turning those people into the, the creators for, for major brands. I'll give you more examples, but the, really it's a, it's a fascinating example of, of how to catch up the evolution without necessarily having to integrate it yourself. This is a, a series of, of a, two vines created by Visa. By You'll recognize that the first creator is the same here. Whoa. So what are we doing this weekend? Oh, well. Happy birthday! Oh no, it's your birthday. Oh, thank you. So bringing voices together, and it's it's quite broad in its perspective. So amongst those twenty-seven thousand creators, there's a lot of animators. Animation seen a real resurgence in the last. <laughs> Perrier wanted to demonstrate the, the, the richness to their product. I'm going to show you two final examples. This, this one is from Comcast. So Comcast wanted to illustrate that their, their cable box that in the US was the most versatile way to bring your entertainment with you. And it includes, the, the first one's by uh, Ry Doon, and then you've seen a few Zach Kings before. I love scary movies. <laughs> Let's throw it on the big screen. <laughs> Andrew, how many makes a platform? Sure. <laughs> because these things sort of operate in the idiom of of the, the, the way that young people are consuming their feeds and they're, they're sliding through and they end up being watched multiple times. Actually, it just brings it very quickly. It brings brands very quickly into a sort of native environment. I'm going to show you, there's a couple of UK examples. This is uh, slightly more on the animation front, front from EE in the UK. And actually, the, the niche business, we were, we were so inspired with this massive disruption that Twitter ended up buying it. So we, the, um, the, the 27,000 creators is growing strongly. I think it's, it's more than doubled in the last three months and very strongly come to the UK. So we've, we've done a, a number of uh, hirings in the, in the UK to try and bring those people here. It doesn't just exist on platforms like Vine. It's on Instagram. So there's a couple of uh, examples here. It's on Snapchat as well. Fascinating response. So what I've tried to do today is sort of illustrate that a lot of the changes that people talk about have actually already happened and it's just a question of us noticing them and adapting to them. So the changes I've mentioned there, the shift to vertical, the proliferation of video, actually a lot of that has already happened from a consumer point of view. The, the, uh, the shift to mobile, the new voices. Uh, just to, to square the circle, what we saw on the, those ad campaigns for the, the niche providers and why we were so fascinated in it is that of all the, the brands that used that, they saw a 56% increase in the, uh, the brand awareness that they created. So it's, it was really at the, 
extreme end of how advertising works using that native environment. Massive changes, like I say, and I think the, the, the critical thing from Twitter going forwards is that we're fascinated in how these things are going to impact our business. There's probably one thing that I'd leave you with that we think that is the, the main USP of Twitter, what the, the, the main thing is we enter our second 10 years, and it's that evolution of live, the way that effectively most of us, when, when we find a connection with Twitter, when we enjoy what it does, it's when we open it up and it shows us the world as it is right now. It's, gives us the opportunity to see what's happening right now. So whether that's big sporting news or people's opinions on the, the budget this afternoon, that's the thing that Twitter really is going to develop in it and work on over the next 10 years of our life. Thank you very much.